Good morning to Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, Acton. My name is Pat Bennett, and I just wanted to greet you this morning on this beautiful, sunny, hot morning. And I know that a lot of you have been um, depressed or bored or tired of staying home, wearing a mask and everything, but there's lots of things we can do during this, like FaceTime our friends, get caught up on some Bible reading, pick a book you've been wanting to read. So come on with me now to service and enjoy this Sunday morning. Welcome to Mount Calvary. My name's Eric, I'm one of the pastors here. We're in a sermon series through the book of Jonah. Jonah was that prophet that ran away from God. Well, he thought he could run away from God. And so he ran into a storm and in the midst of the storm, he was thrown into the sea. And as he's sinking in the sea, a great fish swallows him. And that's where Jonah prays this incredible prayer in Jonah chapter two. Let me share a couple verses with you. Verse eight says, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. At the point of despair, Jonah does what most of us would do. We pray, we talk to God. And what Jonah says here is quite amazing. He's saying those who cling to anything more important than God are clinging to something that's called an idol. It's something that we put above God. And because we do that, what we're doing is we're actually forfeiting receiving God's grace. I don't know about you, but I need God's grace. So would you pray with me this morning? Let's ask God to forgive us all of our sins. Let's pray. Lord, help us not to make the same mistakes as Jonah. Almighty Lord, we confess that we put you in the background of our lives while we pursue and put worthless idols first in our lives. We become like Jonah. Forgive us, Lord. God, we confess that our intellect and our stubborn thinking convinces us that we know more than you. Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path in life, but our very minds convince us that we know a better way to live. We become like Jonah. Forgive us, Lord. Gracious Lord, we acknowledge that our way of thinking about things sometimes is opposite of what you say in your word. We listen to our faulty intelligence more than your words to us. These things become an idol and rob us from your grace. We become like Jonah. Forgive us, Lord. I love what it says in verse 9. Jonah says this, salvation comes from the Lord. God has given us salvation. God, our Father in heaven, gave his one and only son, Jesus, to be our Savior. And he went to the cross to forgive us every single one of our sins. Grace poured out from him on the cross for you. And because of his great love for you, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh 
The Old Testament lesson comes to us today from Jonah 3, 1 through 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it is the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew 13, 24 through 30, 36 through 43. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you were pulling the weeds, uh, pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into the barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will weed out of the kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever is, has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi, boys and girls, this is Pastor Eric. It's so good to have you with me today. Have you ever gone to the beach? What do you do at the beach? Eat snacks? Have something fun to drink? Maybe go for a swim in the ocean? Boys and girls, I love to look for seashells. Do you like to look for seashells? I brought some seashells from Orange Beach, Alabama. That's a long ways away from Massachusetts. Here is one of the shells, see that? They've got little shells down in Orange Beach, Alabama. Well, imagine one day you're walking down the beach, you're collecting seashells, and all of a sudden you smell something. <laughs> something that smells like rotten fish. And then coming out of the sand is a person all covered in sand and fish vomit. Ooh! Well, that story happened in a book called Jonah. Jonah would probably tell you a story. I know what I would do if I saw a man who is covered in fish vomit and covered in sand. I would run to my mom and dad. But if you were to listen to Jonah, he would tell you that he was in the fish for three days and three nights. And his name was Jonah. Can you spell it with me? J-O-N-A-H, Jonah. But God would send us someone greater than Jonah. His name also starts with a J. Do you know who his name is? Can you spell it with me? Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. 
S U S. Jesus is the greater Jonah. Jesus would be buried in a tomb for three days and three nights, but Jesus would also come back alive so that we would live with him forever. Boys and girls, this summer I want to give you a gift. If you contact Mount Calvary or your parents contact Mount Calvary, we'll send you a free copy of this book. It's the book of Jonah. And you can have your mom or dad read it with you. Simply give a phone call to the church or contact us online and we'll send you this book. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for giving us a greater Jonah named Jesus, our Lord and Savior who loves us. In his name we pray. Amen. May God bless you guys this summer. God started a baseball league. 
how many swings at bat would you have? I love baseball. I remember playing baseball Little League over in Maynard as a kid. Did you ever play Little League baseball? Baseball's got a lot of rules to it. When you're little and learning, you got to learn all these new things, how to catch the ball, how to pitch the ball, how to bat. Then there's weird rules in baseball that just don't make any sense at all. But baseball takes some time to learn. And life is like baseball. It sometimes just takes, well, it takes time to learn how to learn to live life according to God's way. As a kid playing Little League Baseball, I was really good at one thing, striking out. Sometimes when I would strike out, my teammates would be a little disappointed. Sometimes I would be even a little disappointed in myself. And in life, sometimes I make mistakes and I simply strike out. But God is like this incredible coach, a coach who's a cheerleader, and he plays by different rules. See, in baseball, you've got three strikes and you're out. But God, as your coach, would say something like this. Hey, Eric, stay in the batter's box. You're not out. We're playing by my rules. Stay up to bat. So I'd step into the batter's box and hear my coach cheering my name. Eric, you've got this. You can do this. The pitcher would wind up and throw the ball over the middle of the plate. I'd take a swing at the bat, and the bat and the ball would connect, and the ball would go into fair play. You'd run as fast as I could down to first base, and then out of my peripheral vision, I'd see my coach. It's God who's cheering me down to first base. Go, Eric, go! You can do this! That's the amazing things about our Lord. He gives us chances time and time and time again. Really an unlimited number of chances. Today, as we take a look at Jonah chapter 3, we're going to see that Jonah gets another chance. I invite you to grab your Bibles and open up to Jonah chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3 together. Then we're going to jump over to a New Testament uh, set of verses in Matthew chapter 12. But first, let's take a look at Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It starts like this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord, and the Lord went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. In Jonah chapter 3, starting at verse 1, it sounds very much like Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Did you catch it? Take a look. In chapter 1, verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. In ver chapter 3, verse 1, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. It's pretty much the same thing. But there are some differences. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, it continues like this. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Imitai. At first, that doesn't seem to be too important. It's just a, his dad's name is Imitai. But Imitai in Hebrew means truthful or faithful. And by the time we get to Jonah chapter 3, we know that Jonah is anything but faithful. He ran away from God's word. He was disobedient. He went down to Joppa, down to a ship, down into the belly of the ship where God sent a big storm. And then in the big center of the storm, Jonah is thrown into the sea where he's swallowed by a great fish. And that's where he starts praying in Jonah chapter 2. By the time we get to the end of chapter 2, Jonah has been spit up on dry land. And he is now uh, ready to hear from the word of the Lord again. Take a look at what it says in Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. You see, he's not referred to here as the son of Imitai, the faithful one. Instead, he's called Jonah a second time. 
God's grace is so amazing that God gives us extra chances. He gives us a second time. When Jonah was in despair, drowning in the depths of the sea, when seaweed was wrapped around his head, Jonah cried out to the Lord and the Lord was gracious. Salvation came to the Lord. And so Jonah, Jonah is a guy who gets a second chance. He's Jonah a second time. As I look at Jonah, I think of my own self. I'm really Eric, Eric a second time. There's many times where I've blown it, where God has said, Eric, this is really the way I want you to do things, and I just have walked away from God. How about you? So at times, God will do things like this to me. I'll be like, Eric, you really need to love your wife better. And sometimes I'll be like, nope. Eric, you really need to put me first more in life. And sometimes I'll be like, nope. How about you? Now, before you get a little bit too harsh on Jonah a second time, or Eric a second time, I want to remind you of something. You and I, we share the same last name. We are all part of the second time family. Hi, nice to meet you. My name's Eric, a second time. What's your name? Oh, Amy, a second time. We must be related. Oh, who are you? Tim. Oh, Tim, you're part of my extended family. Let me guess, your last name is a second time, right? That's right. See, we're all part of a second time family. God loves us so much, and he loved Jonah so much that he would make Jonah a second time. Jonah is still the prophet of God. He's still the one whom God has called to go to Nineveh. Nothing's changed there. Jonah's word came to the, the word of the Lord came to Jonah and shared with him that he still has to go to Nineveh and share a message to those people. Nothing's changed. Jonah's identity is restored. He's still the prophet. See, he's Jonah a second time. For you and me, we are people of a second time. God loves us so much that he would give us second times. Now, we're all second time people because of the love of Jesus Christ. God loved us so much that he would send someone greater than Jonah, someone more amazing that could do more than what Jonah would do. Jesus is truly the faithful one. Jesus would come and he would forgive us all of our sins. When our lives are wrapped in sin and despair, Jesus would unwrap that sin and despair and put it to himself on the cross. He loves you that much. Jesus gives you more than just a second time. He gives you unlimited amounts of time. You know, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 12 with me. Go to verse 38 through 41. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is talking to some Pharisees, and he shares something really remarkable about himself as he's having a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the Pharisees. Take a look at Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 through 41. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to Jesus, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Circle that in your mind. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment with this generation condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. Did you know that Jesus refers to Jonah? And Jonah is the only Old Testament prophet that Jonah refers himself to. It's just Jonah. But Jesus is greater than Jonah. Jonah wasn't faithful to the Lord. He ran away. Jesus is faithful. 
fully obedient to the will of his father. Jonah runs away and gets caught in the storm of the sea. Jesus gets caught in the waves of sin that's put upon himself on the cross. Jonah is buried in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights. Jesus is buried in the earth for three days and three nights. Jonah didn't die in the belly of the great fish. Jesus really died, but came back again to life so that you and me, we would get a second time. He would give us forgiveness of sins and eternal life for all who believe in him. Jesus is your greater Jonah. Well, how did Jonah respond to all this? If you turn back to Jonah chapter three, verse three, we get to see how Jonah responded to this grace that he received from God. Uh, Jonah uh, responds in this way in verse three. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and he went to Nineveh. Jonah was done with excuses. No more excuses, no more running away from God. Instead, he's going to be obedient. He's going to go. For you and me who have received this amazing grace from our Lord and Savior Jesus, really, we don't need any excuses. Throughout the Bible, we get to see people time and time again come up with a lot of excuses. In Rick Warren's book, A Purpose Driven Life, he lists a number of people that have a lot of excuses. Let me share some of them with you this morning. Abraham, well, he was old. Jacob was insecure. Leah was unattractive. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. Gideon was poor. Samson was codependent. Rahab was immoral. David was unfaithful and had family problems. Elijah was suicidal. Jeremiah was depressed. Jonah was reluctant, our prophet here. Naomi was a widow. John the Baptist was really eccentric. Peter was impulsive and hot-tempered. Martha worried a lot. And the Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Finally, Zacchaeus was unpopular and Thomas doubted. All these people, all these people had excuses. But when you experience the grace of Jesus Christ, when you truly experience this grace, those excuses start to vanish and go away. You see, God has you here for a greater purpose. Let me ask you this question. Why does God have you here today? God has you here, much like Jonah. There are some people that he has in your future for you to meet and tell a little bit about his love to them. See, when you truly experience the grace of God, the excuses go away. And that's what's happened to Jonah. He's experienced the grace of God. No more making excuses. No more running to ports and getting on ships. Instead, he got up and he went to Nineveh. For you and me, when we truly experience the grace of God, excuses, well, they get put aside. No more saying, I'm too old. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Consider Jonah. He just had the promise from God. Go to Nineveh and deliver the message that I'll give to you. The words will come. No more excuses. I love the book, True Faced. In the book, True Faced, God's grace is described as a personal friend. In the book, the author describes it like this. When grace introduces us to repentance, the two of us, you and grace, become best friends. When anything else introduces us to repentance, it feels more like a warden that has come to lock us up. But when grace gets involved, the truths of repentance reveal a fabulous world that's freeing us up. It's freeing us up to a life of beauty. That's what was happening to Jonah. 
he was experiencing the beauty of life living in God's grace. He was Jonah, but not just Jonah. He was Jonah a second time. The same promise, friends, is for you. I'm Eric a second time. You're a part of this big family. All of our last names are a second time. May God bless you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who all gives us many chances and forgiveness and love. God bless you. Friends in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for your loving mercy, your grace. Indeed, salvation comes from the Lord. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be our Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for us, rose again to give us life. Lord, we are also so thankful for sending a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who creates faith in our lives. Lord, during these days ahead of us, many of us are struggling with depression, sadness, grief, anxiety. May the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, 
bring comfort to us in these days ahead. Almighty Lord, we ask for wisdom for those who govern our land, for the school administrators who have to make some tough decisions in the days and weeks ahead. For our students and teachers, Lord, we ask that you'd keep them safe. Lord, we ask that you'd bring healing to our country, that you would develop a vaccine to this coronavirus quickly or by your supernatural will. Just heal our country and heal our world. Lord, we pray for those who are going in for surgery soon. We pray especially for Maggie, who's going in for knee surgery. Bless her heart, calm her of any concerns that she has, and prepare the doctors to guide them and direct them through this surgery. Lord, we lift these things up and others, praying the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.